Today, we're gonna go over how to replace the touchscreen on your Ender 5 Plus with our 12864 LCD upgrade kit. Let's get to it. Like a few of the other printers we have here where we've done the LCD conversion on, this is the same process for the Ender 5 Plus as it is for printers like the CRX or the CR10S Pro. The goal of getting rid of the touchscreen is getting full access to your printer's firmware so you can have more control over your machine and make it easier to use. If I had to compare the touchscreen and the 12864 LCD, I would equate the touchscreen to an iPhone whereas the 12864 would be like Android. The touchscreen is easy to use and it looks pretty, but it doesn't offer much customization and it's pretty locked down. Because Creality did not use open source firmware or share the source code with the firmware for the LCD screen that comes with these machines, there's not much we can do in terms of customizations without tons of reverse engineering and a lot of time that might end up not amounting to anything. So the best thing to do is replace this touchscreen with an industry standard screen that a lot of other printers use and with that comes a lot of new features. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install this on your Ender 5 Plus. If you're also doing the Easy Board conversion, you will need this LCD conversion to use the Easy Board with the Ender 5 Plus, along with the Creality dual cable LCD adapter part. This will allow you to connect the 12864 LCD to our Easy Board, aside from changing the board out and using that adapter to connect the LCD to our Easy Board. The installation process is the same as the factory control board. So I'm gonna show you guys right now how to install this screen on your Ender 5 Plus. So we have our Ender 5 Plus here unplugged and ready to undergo the LCD conversion. So the first thing we're going to need to do is turn this on its side so we can get access to the bottom control box screws to take the bottom panel off. To remove your bottom panel, we have six total screws, one, two, three, four, five, six. So go ahead and remove those screws. To do that, you're gonna need a two millimeter Allen wrench. Now, I'd recommend leaving this top right screw in if you have it oriented like this because this fan will need to be unplugged when we remove this from the chassis. Be careful not to let this panel fall because you can damage the connector for this fan. I'm going to carefully remove this panel and then unplug this fan from the main board. So now that we have the bottom cover removed, the first thing we're going to need to do is disconnect the stock LCD from the main board and then remove these four screws in the corners here to get rid of the stock LCD. When you take the last screw out, hold the LCD so it doesn't fall. Remove the LCD from your printer and the rubber gasket. You will need to reconnect the ground wire to the post here with the screw that you took the screen out with. Insert the screw almost all the way and then slide the terminal back underneath the screw. And tighten the screw down. Now with the ground wire in place, give it a little tug, make sure it stays in place. With the new LCD case printed and the screws installed, we're ready to install this on our machine. If you notice, we have four M3 by eight screws in each corner, and then two M4 by eight screws with matching T-nuts in the bottom. This goes on to the front like this. Make sure your T-nuts are set about this distance so they'll bite into the extrusion. Lower this on to the front of the printer and center it between the two screws holding the chassis to the extrusion. Use an M3 Allen key to do this. Check that both sides locked in. If you can't pull it up, then both sides are locked in and we can now connect the LCD. Use the two included ribbon cables to connect the LCD EXP1 and EXP2 headers to the board's EXP1 and EXP2 headers. Now 
Now that we have these both connected, we're ready to see if we need to make any adjustments to the cables. I'm now going to plug the USB connection into my board to see if the LCD screen lights up. The backlight on our LCD is turning on, meaning we do not need to reverse any of these cables. If your LCD does not light, you can go ahead and rotate these 180 degrees and that will correct the issue. Depending on where you purchase your LCD from and the cables included with it, sometimes rotating the connectors may be necessary. To do this, just unplug them, flip them over, and push them into the socket. You will see this flex out a little, and this is perfectly fine, and make sure you do it for both ends. This is only needed if your LCD does not light up. Since this LCD lit up on the first try, I'm going to put these back to the original configuration. Now we're going to plug this back into our computer and update the firmware with the firmware from the TH3D website and set it up as the under five. I've downloaded the firmware from the TH3D website and extracted it to a folder on my computer. To get started, all we need to do is double click open firmware windows.bat and the IDE is going to start up. Once you're in the firmware, go ahead and click configuration.h at the top of the screen. And to get to the Ender 5 Plus section quickly, you can do a control F, type Ender 5 underscore plus, and hit enter. You can go ahead and close the find window and scroll down to get to the Ender 5 Plus section. Go to tools, make sure your board is Arduino Mega 2560 and select the COM port your printer is on. Your COM port will be different. So if you're not sure what the COM port is that your printer is on, see what you have listed, unplug it, see which one disappeared, and that's the one that your printer's on. In my case, it's COM6. My printer is completely stock, with the exception of the LCD we just installed, so I'm going to uncommon three lines. Under five plus, RRLCD upgrade, and Ender 5 plus BL Touch. If you're using an easy ABL sensor on here, you can leave this commented out and use the custom probe option and enter your offsets below. At this point, I'm going to do a file, save, and then hit the little arrow to upload to the printer board. This speed will vary depending on the speed of your computer and should take about one to five minutes depending on how fast your computer is. Your computer will now upload the firmware to your printer board. And if we look at the board, you can see the LEDs flashing to indicate that the board is communicating with your computer to receive the new firmware. This will take about 30 seconds to upload to your printer board. Once the flash is complete, you will see in the lower left hand corner, AVR dude done, thank you, and done uploading. At this point, we have completed the upgrade and you should now see the logo on your screen when you turn the printer on. Now with the firmware upgraded and the LCD installed, we can do the most important step, which is peeling the LCD film. In the LCD bag, if you get the screen from us, there is a knob that you can push fit onto this knob. Otherwise, there are knobs you can print if you don't like the plastic one that's included with this screen. I'm going to go ahead and turn my printer on. And here we have it. TH3D logo with our firmware on the printer. You can go ahead and test your basic functions. And the printer should work as normal. With this LCD installed, you have full functionality of your printer's board that you do not get with the touchscreen. Do note that the, even though there is an LCD slot on the side, this is non-functional and you will still need to use the SD slot on your printer's control board. This is because Creality does not pass the SD LCD pins over the cable because they have the onboard slot. Once you have this installed while you're printing, you can press this button twice and you'll get your baby stepping options. We also have full control over our motion settings such as velocity, jerk, acceleration, steps per millimeter, and even our probe offset setting. In addition to that, we have a BL Touch test menu. If you have a BL Touch installed, 
We also have options to reset the EEPROM and store settings. These are all things you do not get with your stock touchscreen. In addition to all those other features, we also have full PID regulation for the hot end, and you can even auto-tune right from the LCD. I hope this upgrade makes a lot of people happy and gives you the full functionality of your printer that the touchscreen does not give you.